Hi, my name is Carl Lenning and I am a public school teacher in the state of Florida and I wanted to compare the Florida retirement system to other state retirement systems. The main reason that I wanted to do this for was because Governor Scott has talked about making the Florida retirement system a contributory system where employees would contribute to their own retirement. Um, I wanted to point out that not only contribution rates should be considered when we're talking about how a state's retirement system compares to another state's retirement system. I'm doing this because his statement that Florida employees are one of the only ones that don't contribute to their own retirement system seems to imply that Florida retirement system employees are somehow getting away with something or not paying into the system like they should. So I wanted to illustrate that that just is not the case. All right. Before we get into talking about the retirement calculations, we need to talk about how they are calculated, the different parts that go into it. They are years of service, the multiplier percentage, and the average final compensation. And we're going to look at each one of these individually really quickly. The years of service is very easy to understand. It's how many years you've worked for the system or if you've bought any years because of military service or some other kind of uh, way of getting extra years of service. Um, that goes into calculating how many years of service. Generally speaking, this is just the number of years you worked in the uh, agency that is in the state retirement system. Second, we have the multiplier percentage. Now this is where it gets a little confusing. The multiplier percentage is a percentage figure that's different in each state. It's applied to each year of service that you have in that state retirement system. Um, one thing to point out is that the larger this multiplier is, the higher the retirement benefits will be for the employee. Finally, we have average final compensation. Um, this figure averages your salary and wages over a specific number of years. Uh, this is different in each state. The shorter the AFC period is, it will result in a higher retirement benefit for the employee. This is because, as anyone knows, if you're going to average a set of numbers, if you average, if you put the numbers in order from least to greatest, which is generally how a person's pay will go, they will make more money as they go further into their career. If you average a smaller group of those numbers together, you're going to get a higher average than you would if you averaged more numbers together. So we'll see how that works in just a second. Let's see what Florida retirement's figures are. For the Florida retirement system, the multiplier is a 1.6%. I want to remind you that higher here is better. And the Florida Retirement Systems multiplier is the 10th lowest in the southeastern United States. The only state that's worse is Tennessee. They have a 1.5% multiplier. The average final compensation for Florida is the five highest years. Here again, shorter, a shorter AFC period is better. Florida Retirement Systems AFC period is the longest in the southeastern United States. It is tied with Tennessee, so we're basically last on AFC and next to last on multiplier. Here is a typical retirement calculation. This is how the states calculate a person's retirement. It's years of service times the multiplier percentage times the average final compensation, and that will give you an employee's retirement benefit. So we're going to calculate this for a fictional employee, John Doe. Who is John Doe? He is a teacher for 30 years in Florida public schools, plans to retire in the year 2011, has a bachelor's degree so he doesn't have any special degrees like a master's degree or doctorates or anything like that, has no supplementary income. I'm just using basic numbers here. He wasn't a coach or a club sponsor or department head where you get a little bit extra money. Not nearly enough, but um, they do get a little extra money. I just didn't want to include that here. So. Let's just say his salary over the last five years is shown here, ranging from 2006-2007 school year at 48000 to 52000 in the year 2010-2011. His AFC would be $50,000. We get this by averaging those five numbers because that's how it works in Florida. It's the five highest years. Recognize really quick before we move on that if you were in the state of Georgia, for instance, the AFC here would be higher for John Doe because you would only average the highest two years. That's what their AFC is. So you would only average 52,000 and 51,000. So that would be an AFC of 51,500, not 50,000 like we have here in Florida. So here is his retirement benefit calculation. Years of service is 30. The multiplier is 0 0.016 or 1.6%. The AFC is $50,000. That will give him a retirement benefit of $24,000 annually.
monthly his benefit would be $2,000. One thing to keep in mind here, John Doe is not going to be a rich individual off of this retirement. At the end of his career, he was making approximately $4,300 a month in salary, and now that has been reduced to $2,000 per month. That's 48% of what he was making. 30 times 1.6% is 48%. So how do we have this? Uh, here's a comparison of the multipliers for each of the southeastern United States. There's 11 states in the southeast U.S. Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, you get it. Um, Florida's multiplier is 1.6. Notice the rank. It is 10th. The only one that's worse is Tennessee at 1.5%. Uh, the best ranks here you see are Kentucky and Louisiana at 2.5% and then it goes on down from there. Mississippi, I do need to point out, has a two-part multiplier. Um, theirs is a little bit better. I know it looks weird because Mississippi has a higher ranked multiplier than Alabama, although Alabama is showing 2.01% and Mississippi is showing 20 The reason for that is that Mississippi has 2.0% for the first 25 years and 2.5% for additional years. If you factor that in over a 30-year period, that would actually be a higher multiplier than Alabama. Here's the AFC comparisons. Florida, again, five highest. They are ranked 10th, last, tied with Tennessee. Other states, Georgia's the best at a two-year highest AFC. Um, most states have three here. You can see all the states tied with three, and a few states have four. All right, so what would John do um, if he had taught in another state? How would his uh, retirement work out for him? Um, notice here we figured out the 24000 in red for the state of Florida. You may want to pause on this screen for a little while in this video so you can really look over the numbers. But you can see if this employee was a teacher or uh, in another state, you're going to see that the retirement benefit for every state except for Tennessee is much higher. Much higher. Um, I like to compare monthly. The last column there is monthly. Notice, for instance, that in the state of Georgia, which is you know our nearest neighbor here in Florida, the state of Georgia, uh, John Doe would receive $575 more per month if he retired in the state of Georgia. It doesn't seem like Florida state employees, Florida retirement employees, are getting away with anything to me, Governor Scott. Now, why do these states, why would he do better in these states than he would in Florida? The reason is contribution rate. So that makes it sound like Governor Scott really has his stuff together and he really wants us to do better by contributing to our own retirement. The problem is Governor Scott has only talked about changing Florida's contribution rate from 0% non-contributory to 5%. He has not said anything about increasing the multiplier or decreasing the AFC period, both of which would help Florida retirees, both of which are main components in contributory systems. Higher multipliers, shorter AFCs, higher retirement. The employee does contribute to his own retirement, but gets it back later in the form of higher retirement benefit checks. One thing to notice here, Tennessee does have a 5% contribution rate. That is for teachers only. Other state employees, including higher education employees like college professors, do not contribute to their own retirement. They have a non-contributory system. So in fact, their retirement system is better than ours. That would put Florida in dead last place if you are a, a different state employee, not a teacher. So in summary, states that have contributory retirement systems generally have higher multipliers and shorter AFC periods. These contribute to higher retirement benefits. Governor Scott wants to FRS change to a contributory system without increasing the multiplier or shortening the AFC period to compensate for these out-of-pocket contributions. As far as the amount of benefits received by retiring teachers, FRS in its current form, that means as it is right now, non-contributory, FRS is next to last in the southeastern United States. If FRS was changed to a contributory system without significant changes made to the multiplier or the AFC period, FRS would still be last, but it would be so moving so far behind most of the other southeastern United States retirement systems. Now, where can we find all this information? All you got to do is do a web search for state retirement system. Let's say you wanted to find information about the Georgia state retirement system. Just put in Georgia retirement system in a search and you'll find some links there in the web search and then all you do is look for publications or members handbook 
and you can find in there what the AFC periods are, the contribution rates, what the multipliers are, any other information you need, vesting periods, and so on and so forth. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact me at either one of these email addresses. Again, my name is Carl Lenning. Um, just hit, drop me a line if you have any other questions. If you need any further explanations, I'll be up, happy to point you in the right direction. Um, just want this information out there. Thank you very much. Goodbye.